Hi, I'm Joel Lycatcher, and today we're talking Tannis Airless Tires. And I've got to correct this tire, and by correct it, I mean I've got to destroy the tire. And we're back. And we got my Falco hub motor here on the 20 inch rim from my Catrack Road. And we are ready to work on it. It's really out of um, true. It wobbles back and forth and up and down that you may have seen from one of the other uh, inset videos that I have here. And the reason it's been sitting here for a whole week now, yes, a whole week since I started the video, is because I found some issues with this wheel. And the, and the issues are because I have done so many wheel evaluations. I've put on between four and six wheels on this hub in the last two years. And in doing so, the little nipples here that hold the spoke to the rim have gotten bad. Four of them have seized up. One of them right here, as you can see, has been smashed. Uh, I couldn't turn it. It was totally sheared up. There's like no top to it compared to this other um, nipple. And there's no way to take this out other than to actually cut it off and replace the nipple. Now I've got four spokes in total that have seized up like that. One I've already replaced and the rest I need to replace. And I've decided I'm going to rebuild this wheel. And the reason I'm going to rebuild it is because I'm not a big fan right now of these aluminum nipples because they're soft and after a while they round out and you can't turn them or adjust them anymore which has brought me to this day. So why did I wait a week? Because I had to buy supplies. I had to buy new nipples. I had to, well, the spokes I ordered a while ago because I was expecting this problem. I have a few spare spokes and I had to wait for this. This was very hard to get. This is what we call nipple cream. Some people call it spoke prep. And this is made to be a lubricant and a sort of a Loctite. So once you adjust the spokes, they stay adjusted. And if they do go out of adjustment, there's still a little lubricant that you could break it and adjust the nipple and it will reseed itself and harden up again. So nipple cream is very important. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of my um, people I respect in the bike industry. His name is Eric. He works at Durango Bike Shops in Pembroke Pines, Florida. And we were talking about spoke nipples. He said to me, these aluminum nipples, not good in South Florida where I am. They're soft. And as you make the spoke tight, these thread can actually get deformed. And he recommended I go with the brass nipples, which I was thinking about because brass is a much harder material and less likely to form and round and stretch out and break like this nipple did over here. So we're going to be changing out all 32 nipples and all four spokes that have seized, which you'll see me cut off in a few moments and reset. And we will rebuild this wheel and I'll try to do it as a time lapse because it's a pretty involved process. And once we rebuild it, then we could Reset the tension on all the spokes and true it up and make it perfect again. We're going to begin by removing some of the bad spokes and I've got them labeled one, two, and three over here. Oh, by the way, just side belt. Uh, covering one of the nipple holes was this little sign here. It says when the wheel was actually built. It says built by Velocity by Jacoby in 512.21. I'm going to hold this for later and put it back on my wheel because I think that's cool. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take our cable cutters, which we're gonna to use to cut the spoke. And I want the spoke to go away from me. Now, I've already loosened up most of the tension, so I'm not expecting this to shoot off like a rocket. So let's go see what happens. Um, these are protective glasses. And let's just pick a spot here and snip. And there it is. And here you can see is the nipple that's just totally seized up. And what we're going to do now, this is on the drive side. And there's two sets of spokes that I have. Drive side and non-drive side. And I've already taken out one of the drive side spokes right here. 
So let's go. This is actually quite simple to do. I'm going to take this little piece of tape off that I glued on here, <laughs> taped on here. This is gaffing tape, which I love because it comes off very easily, uh, but not when you <clears throat> tape it to itself. So we're going to just take this and put it and wheel it out. And this one is going to go right back in the same way. Now this wheel, I have to give this a little bit of a bend, a little bit, because this is a really tight space. So I don't know if you can see the little bend there. And that is so I can get it in there and turn it down. But even more so, on this wheel you can see, this is really hard, because this is, again, only a 20 inch wheel. If this was a bigger wheel, I wouldn't have such a problem. I'm going to take a little bit of my gaffing tape. And I'm going to just put it on the front here, in front of the hole, because as I put this on, I don't want to scratch my anodized finish. I'm going to bend this and get it into that hole, which is not so easy to do. And I actually finished myself bad doing this before. Okay. Now we got it in. And now i got to unbend it a bit. Push it back a bit. Okay. Now, when we apply, put the nipple on this and apply tension, it will straighten out quite a bit. So now, we're gonna take the new nipple, which, by the way, here's the old nipples. These came from Falco. I ordered additional um, spokes and nipples, which are actually quite reasonably priced. And, you see, this is the old one, this is the new one, and they are different lengths. The brass is slightly taller, and that's not a problem at all. So we're going to put this away for somebody else, somebody else's wheel, and I'm going to happen to have a nipple driver here, and I'm just going to put this on lightly. Now, by the way, here's a little trick. I learned. Take a toothpick. You stick it right in there, and now it gets a whole lot easier to looking down the hole there as I just get it started. Once I do, and I could take a little bit of a spoke crunch, maybe, and just. I just want to thread tight. We'll tighten it up later. There we go. And take the little toothpick out. And you know what? I need to take paws. I need to get some more toothpicks. And like magic, we're back with toothpicks. Take a few. Let's move on to this spoke that's been all rounded out. Take that tape off. And we're going to give it a little cut so this here to catch it. Again, I've already taken a lot of the stress off this so it doesn't shoot off like a rocket. That did not shoot off at all. There's the bottom. Come back to the top. Now this is the non-drive side. So we need to get the non-drive side. Because these spokes are a different length between the drive side and the non-drive side. So now that we have the hole on the other side, I'm going to put this tape on that side to protect the rim. And as I see, I've got to thread it like this, so I've got to bend it so it bends this way. Again, I'm going to straighten these out once I apply tension. This is definitely a tougher one from the non-drive side. Okay, we're in the hole. I'm going to take some of that bend out. Again, when we, add, when we tighten it up, we'll take that stress out. OK. 
Okay. There we go. No, no, where's that? Where? Where's the new one? There it is. By the way, I want to make this a little bit straighter. Just a little bit more of a bend. Okay. Seems that it's not wanting to go straight in too well, but let's get that started. We can use, oh, we don't quite have it up yet. We now we need the nipple driver in this case. Get that going. And this is the one that's really, really bad. Let's see if we can get closer up on this. Well, this is the problematic nipple that you see is all sheared off on the side, and I gotta cut this spoke off. So let's go try and do that. I'm trying to do this one handed while I hold the camera, so bear with me. There we go. And as you see, this spoke still isn't coming out, so I gotta like work on this to get this metal off so I can remove it. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and try and shear that off. Oh, there it is. That's all I had to do. And there it is, the bad nipple and piece of nipple. Now that we got that, we can take the drive side out. Now over here we've got this beautiful sticker I do not want to mess up. So I'm going to put some tape over that. And get my drive side spoke. I think I ordered 10 spokes just to have some spares. I'm using four of them here. Okay, so then this is going to go like this, and I'm going to give it a little bend. Wait. Bend. Yeah, this way. Little bend. Hmm. Come on. Come on there. There we go. And again, I've got to bow this to get it in. I'm going to bow it. It's very hard on the fingers. <clears throat> if I don't do it right, I'm going to get a scratch in my rim. Okay, I'm going to take this out. Hello. I need a bit more of a bow in this. I'm going to do a little bit more of a bend. Work it in there. And, oops, I had it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so give it. That one wasn't as lucky. I think I scratched up the end and died through a bit. All right, so let's straighten this out now. Okay, a little more. Ow, that's harder than the thumbs. Okay, grab my new nipple, our toothpick. I mean, this is pretty much routine. Now, this is after I get this one done then the rest should be fairly easy because I've already loosened them all up. Seems like the drive side is a lot easier to get started. And the nipple driver. Eventually we're gonna get all these just so the threads are covered, the spoke threads are covered, but I just wanna get it on a little bit now. Then we take this off. And we didn't hurt the label at all. So, yay! Okay, so with that, we have replaced all the seized 
spokes. Let's straighten this one up a little bit more. And now I have to go around and remove all the other nipples. And you can see how shiny this is compared to these. So let's start with the, the mark here. That's where the um, valve used to go. I'm going to cover this from the inside next. But we're going to go and take all these out. So let's start with uh, just turning them. And the last thing I want to do is have that uh, nipple um, fall inside the rim because we have kind of like a double rim here. Double walled rim. Oh, boy, that is just gripping. Yeah, at one point you can actually start using your fingers. Tell you what, I'm going to put this in the time lapse and you can watch me do them all really, really, really fast. Well, here we are. I've replaced all the aluminum nipples, the original nipples, with the new brass nipples. But before I can start to true the wheel, I've got to back off all of the um, nipples so they're in the right position with a few threads showing. And then I can apply some of the nipple cream, let that soak in, and then I can start to uniformly tighten all of the nipples, and then I can start to true the wheel. So let's get started with that. So we're backing off the nipples here because we need to have thread exposed. We need enough that the nipple cream, which is right here, the nipple cream, can actually latch on to the um, threads of the nipple and make a nice tight seal and lubricant for adjustments in the future. Here we go, backing it off, exposing just a few threads. Okay, now let's see. we don't want to make take it off so much that um, <laughs> that that the nipple falls off. Yeah, and this is going to be very, very loose. I mean, you can see the hub is probably going <laughs> to get shaky in here because there's going to be no tension on these uh, spokes. Right now there's literally no tension. We'll be tensioning it up in a little bit. So here's one that needs a little, some more threads exposed. Very loose now. Some of them already have threads exposed. I was purposely not tightening these much when I put the new nipples on because I knew I didn't want to um, have the nipples drawn all the way down on the threads. Yeah, you can use a lot, number of different tools here. You can use a spoke wrench or a screwdriver. Which can, we just want to back off some thread here. So now we're going to take our rock and roll nipple cream and we're going to put a few drops on here right after we shake it really, really well. Because we need this to be a lubricant and a Loctite in one. So let's find the uh, the hole. And there we go, There's, and that's our starting point. 
And I want a little bit more light here. See what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put a drop on all of the threads. You know, this one of the reasons why it took me a whole week to get this done was because it was hard to get this stuff. My local bike shop ran out and I called two or three other bike shops and most of them didn't, didn't have a clue what this stuff was. So now that we got that, I'm gonna hold the wires here on the back. I don't want them to spin and I wanna, ow, huh, don't pinch my fingers. And I wanna spin the wheel without pinching the wires as I'm holding it. And I wanna try and get capillary action or so I'm sorry, centrifugal action to bring that down the spokes into the deeper into the nipples. I can't really get a lot of speed out of this because, well, it's got a motor with magnets in there. All right, now let's bring these down. I wanna get each of these down so none of the threads are visible. And that's how we're gonna start our time. Oh, I should have started right here at the hole. The hole's the reference point. Let's get it so we don't see any threads. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to wipe off any extra, any extra stuff we might have here because all the nipple cream is now seeded into the nipples and the spokes. So, so there, there are other products, um, but I wanted this liquid one because I was doing a rebuild and not new. If it was new uh, and I could prep the spokes all off of the wheel, then I might have used something like Wheelsmith. But while I'm working on the wheel, I thought the rock and roll would be much easier to use. You know, just doing a little cleanup here. The wheel has absolutely no tension on it right now. Now, at this point, you can clearly see that the hub, the motor and everything is just loose here. There's so much play in it. So now we start the job of truing where we're going to tighten them all up. We want to start with maybe three turns all the way around and get a little until all this goes away. And then we'll start working on the uh, side to side. Okay, always starting here. We're just going to come here and give it, actually before I start, I'm going to go clean up my hands. I got nipple prep on here. All right, so we're going to start with the hole and we're going to give it three full turns. One, two, three. Well, off camera, I finished truing this wheel. It is both radially and laterally round and wobble free. I finished tightening up all the spokes and they all have that same twang, which is rather dull because it is only a 20 inch wheel with very short uh, spokes. 
and you're probably wondering why do i have this regular tire on here it's got an inner tube i want to put this tannis airless tire on here well there's a good reason you see there's not too many ways I can pre-stress this wheel with very short spokes. So what I've done is I put a regular Pumatic tire on and I'm bouncing it on the floor many, many times trying to stretch the spokes, trying to deform them slightly because when you ride, you're actually squishing like this. As you ride, you're doing this to the tire, but you don't see it because it's very slight. As you go around, the bottom is always squished down. So when I bounce this, I'm actually compressing the tire and the spokes, and that is helping me pre-stress the spokes. So I've done that already, and now it's time to take this tire off and work on getting this on. So let's get to that next. Well, I'm outside here in front of my garage, and I'm here because it's finally a bright sunny day. It's been three days of solid rain here in South Florida, and I need this hot, full sun to warm up this tire so I can stretch it and get it fitted on my rim. I'm using my Weber barbecue grill thermometer to see how hot the driveway is with this probe. Well, the temperature right now on the pavement is 118 degrees. The target is 120, but I'll take it. So we're gonna take my wheel and just put it on the pavement, simple as that. Let it sit for about 40 minutes to an hour and should soften up. Might come back at some point and just give it a little flip like a pancake. While I've been waiting for the tire to warm up, I set up my tools. I've got my pins, of course, and I've already tested these to be the correct size. The S tool, which comes from Tannis with your tires. This is the P tool that I'm going to be using for the first time. This is a dealer tool. Uh, you can buy this. It's optional. So last time I had to use some zip ties to get them installed, but I may not this time, but I'm going to have them handy and some side cutters to remove the zip ties. I made a little work area here out of these foam pads. These foam pads have a hole in it. Where did I get them from? They came with my Falco wheel that was built by Velocity and shipped to me. Now, you can make your own out of any dense foam and cut holes in it, or just simply ask the bike shop that uh, is installing your wheel for you and received your wheel to save the packing material for you to take home because that can be useful. Well, it's been about an hour, and according to my thermometer, it's about 124 degrees on the pavement. So let's go pick up this wheel. And it's hot. The wheel is very warm, almost too hot. Well, I'd say it feels like about 120 degrees. So at this point, I'm going to try stretching it. And I'm going to just take my foot and give it some tugs. It's, this is hopefully more pliable now than it was before. This definitely should be easier. I'm gonna work fast when I get inside to put the pins in and seat this. It's about 88 degrees out here now. I'm just working it around, trying to get it softened up. There we go. Well, now that we got this all stretched out, we're gonna go take this to the workbench, put the pins in, and mount this on our rim. Let's get to it. Here's our wheel. It's already starting to cool a bit, so let's get working on it. Now there's two sides of these pins. You want the flat side up, which would be this side. And we're just going to start putting all these pins in. I'm putting the rib side down. It's another way of looking at it. I might have to put this back outside again to warm up some more because it's feeling like it's chilling down rather 
faster than I'd like. It's 88 degrees outside and a nice 74 inside. I mean, this is kind of a bore, the boring part of it, sticking the pins in. But that's what we do. It is a lot of pins. The bags come with, I think, 42 pins. In generally speaking, so we have more than enough and a few spares for one tire. And I think that's all the pins come 42 in the bag. And after we get these in, we have to push them down. And that's where this comes in. So we just push them down. This is the easy part. The hard part's coming next. I'm a righty, but I'm doing this with my left hand so you can get a nice view of this on the uh, camera. Pardon my awkwardness of using my left hand. Even this tool has a nice flat area that you can use for pushing pins in. Pretty much anything you could use to push the pins in, as long as it's flat. Okay, let's make sure they're all the way down. Let's give this little second look. And the reason is because we're going to engage one side and then the other. All right, there we go. Look at this side, it's kind of like sticking out a little bit. You know what, I am gonna push them in. I can use my finger at this point. I just wanna center them in there a little better. You wanna center them. You see, it's not hard. They move pretty freely in here. And now they're pretty much even. Now this tire is cooling down. I think I may put it back outside just for a little bit longer, just to warm it up. And then I will put it on here, which will be the difficult part. Well, here's the tire. I uh, just had lunch. I left it in the sun to keep warm while I uh, had my lunch. And uh, it's it got partly cloudy. So this feels like it's maybe 90, de 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what we can do about this. I'm going to take it, pull it towards me. Let's see how far I can get this. Okay, that's pretty much it. I think at this point, I thought I could do better with the stretching. But I think that's about it. So, you know what? The foam blocks, I'm going to save, save for later at this point. Let's see what I can do to get this on. Because one of the tricks that I've learned is I don't want to um, see, you know, excuse me. It's already doing that same thing it did before. Whereas I had it set, but it starts moving. And I find the smaller the tire, the more prevalent this is. So I'm going to start using these zip ties to keep it in place as I get it around. This is my old method, which I thought maybe I can get by without, but afraid not. I still need to use zip ties here. So I, as I progress, progressively get it further onto the wheel. I mean, right now I'm not really trying that hard. It's not that difficult yet. Going put some more pulling. I get it as far as I can, and then I'm going to use the uh, S-Tool. Okay, that's about it. 
that's about as far as I can get it on right now. And the tire is still warm. So now I'm going to use this tool. And I'm going to get over here. And I'm going to try to bring it up. And as I do, I'm going to use a few more zip ties. So I should have had this ready before I started. <laughs> because I can't really, I need a third set of hands. So let's get this started, then I'll tighten it down in a few moments. Okay, so get this up and bring that down. And now we're gonna pull it up some more, bring it down, and more and yeah this can be a slow process ouch this is the part that people hate about the tennis tires because it is hard to get this on This is my method here and try and use this to push it in a little bit. Someone said Ooh, does that work. Let's see if we can get this in up there. Use the tie. Someone said take this and roll it. Let's see if that works. Now let's try kicking it in. Uh, no, I can't get enough this traction to roll it. Right, but I am going to get another zip tie ready. Let's try these and I'll come back to it. For no particular reason that I just want to rest on that one. This one looks like it's pretty good. As I get this on, I tighten these so it cannot undo. Ooh, my hands are getting tired. Okay, that one's out of it. Two more. Last two. Can you see how yeah. that's working? Just bringing it up as I move it along. Making progress. Method. Another zip tie ready. Eventually it'll pop on. But yeah, this is a difficult process. And again, this is why I wanted to warm it. This tool, I wish wasn't... smaller the tire, the more difficult this process is. <clears throat> well, I've got this, let's go get another one. So the zip tie method is still needed and important here. Come on, get in there. By the way, I only buy the finest zip ties from Harbor Freight Tools. Because <laughs> I go through them so frequently. <clears throat> See, as I do this, I'm sliding forward across the tool. <clears throat> there we go. We are actually getting this along quite well. I'm rather pleased with this so far. The first time it took, I did this, it took me like three hours because I didn't do all the things that I now know I can do. Oh, wow, we are almost on this now. Oh my goodness, this is working. I'm gonna take this out. And 
Look at that. Nearly all done. I mean, we're still working on the other side, but I am so pleased with how well this is going along. Okay, so we got to get these over now. So let's try a little old-fashioned rotating. You know what? I think I'm going to need this tool again. Let's see if I can... <clears throat> You know, I'm going to try to snip these off and see if I can get this tool in here for that last bit. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. There it is. And now just kind of rotate it in a bit. Well, you can see how long that took me using these techniques. Warming is very, very important. You know, <laughs> I didn't check my rotation. Uh oh, let's go do that now. Obviously, it goes this way. If this is the wrong rotation, I'll be very unhappy. Let's see. Oh, look. I put it on backwards. It is rotating in the wrong direction. Well, let's go take this off and do it again. So, I am actually using this tool now to take the tire off because I did the stupid newbie mistake of uh, not checking the tire rotation. So let's just break this off and take the tire off and do it again. <sighs> Always check your rotation. You see, here it is. Rotation, this is the gear side, and it rotates this way. So let's go do that again. And let's see if it's just still a fast procedure. Okay. So, let's start again with the zip tie. That's zip tie one. And I need a few more zip ties. And we're just going to seat it in there on one side. <clears throat> and using the zip ties that we go along, I guess this is a second test. <clears throat> and again, we want to stretch it so it's uniform. as we go along. I don't know if you saw that, but it did move as I pulled it. Okay. And I'm going to do this at this point. It gets a little bit more difficult. And I'm just going to put some zip ties in here, but I'm not going to tighten them. I'm just going to get them started. And I'll tighten them in a few moments <clears throat> as we go along. Okay, again, put the wheel down and pull it towards you. And as you pull towards you, move it into the rim. As I pull it towards me, it starts to seep into the room better. <clears throat> now, if I had a 700 wheel, 
or <laughs> almost any wheel longer, larger than this, I would not be having this kind of trouble. This is because it's a small wheel. Okay, give it another good pull. It's getting really hard now. And we'll take our S tool. Oh, take some zip ties. Take some more zips. Again, I'm going to get these ready because I don't have a third hand to help me. I'm just starting to start them. Take my S tool. And bring it up. As I bring it up, I can pull it and zip it. Move it over. Bring it up. And as I bring it up, slide the tool over bringing the tire. <coughs> See, part of the problem here is this, this side isn't in the well as much as I'd like. There we go. <clears throat> Let's bring it closer. <clears throat> bring it nice and high. Get that in. Tighten the zip. And slide the tool forward. Get another zip ready. Close, bring it up. <clears throat> and tighten this up a bit. I'm gonna move this a little closer here. Try to push it up a little more. We'll bring it up and then pull the tire over the tool. zip. We have a lot of zips here. That's okay. That's why I use the finest, most economical zips you can buy from Harbor Freight Tools. I think I pay under three dollars a bag for a bag of a hundred. There we go. This is doing well. Let's see if I can rotate this. No, not really. Get another zip. We are making good progress for the second time. And we are almost all the way in. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Take the tool out. Look at that, we did it. Twice in what was that? Less than five minutes. So let's go and just seat this by giving it a little turn. There we go. See, you hear that? The pins are kind of like slipping into place. 
so we can get the pin down. I call this part that we're seeding the tang of the tire. <laughs> I had a discussion with Tannis. What do you call that thing? And they didn't have a word for it, so I call it a tang. Anyway, now that's in, we don't need these anymore. Let's just cut them off. I kind of learned this method doing Schwabi Marathon Plus tires because they are incredibly hard to put on. But using zip ties to push the tire into the well makes things go much more easy, easily. Okay, that was one of the hardest parts. And if the tire is warm and you got the zip ties, it's not so bad. Okay, next part we're gonna do is these pins. So we're gonna get the pins ready. So what we want is all these pins to be seated on one side. I'm gonna pick uh, this side for no particular reason. So um, let's just push these pins in a little bit. I'm just using my thumb. I want to get them behind the rim. And if I turn the wheel, I might even be able to get them somewhat seated. Maybe yes, maybe no. Actually, some of them are seated on the other side, which I really didn't want, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Just going to push all these in. And now... I'm going to use the P-Tool. You probably saw from my other videos I was using the uh, S-Tool, but I'm going to use the P-Tool this time. And the trick to this, it's supposed to be easier. Just get it in there, put the metal clap on there, and whoops. And you push that in a little more. I got a little tool I like to use here, a little plastic smudger tool. Just want to push that in. I could use pliers for that as well. So let's try this now. Put that on the pin. <clears throat> I don't think it's in far enough. Let's try this. in as much as I can. Let's try it again. There we go. Let's try this one now. Oops. Try it again. There we go. I like this tool so much better than this tool. It costs about $30 and will save you a lot of aggravation. Oh no, but it did mess up my velocity label. Look at that, messed up my velocity label. I guess I'm gonna to have to get rid of that now. That sucks, I like my labels. But I like making this easier too. And maybe I could ask Velocity to send me some new labels. So much easier using this tool. Oops. It actually bends the pin, and as you slide it out, it pushes it into the slot. Now that is not going because I believe it's too far out. So let's shove that in a bit. Try it again. Yeah, you gotta make sure that these pins are inset there good. And then this tool can do its job. Not it enough.
Come on. Yeah, that's in. So we're gonna go all the way around here. All right, I've turned the wheel a little bit and you'll see that's out a little bit. I'm just gonna take my needle needles pliers and just push it in. Take my P-tool, put it on top and rotate slowly. No, not enough. You see how far out that is. Sometimes it gets shoved out a little bit. So let's push that in as far as we can. Okay, try that again. is a tough one try this I like this tool because it's plastic and doesn't scratch anything try again I don't think it's gonna go it's not going it's just not deep enough Come on, maybe it's not in on this side. But it looks like it is. There it goes. Now it's in. All right. Let's try that again. Maybe this one will be easier. There we go. This one looks like it needs to get shoved in a little bit. I'm just using my thumb now. Let's see if you can get a better view here. I'm gonna bring this over like this. There's the pin, there's the tool, and no, not in enough. It's in enough, hmm. Come on. Try this tool. Let's shove it in better. Not always easy, but it's easier to do this than that than the other tool. Let's see if I can do this one and come back to it. Maybe that'll be easier. Do a little pressure on the other side. Hmm. Oh, that didn't work either. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. So you really gotta make sure those pins are in as far as they can go. Um, come on. Snap. Snap. Come on. Ah. I'm not going to use the other method because that PS tool really is painful to use. Come on. Come on. Snap. This is a bad one. I mean, bad in that it's difficult. Come on. Get in there. 
does not want to set. Let's see if I try rotating these a little bit. Give it a little pull on this side. So it should be stuck on the other side. Try it again. This is getting personal. I'm wondering if the pin is even in on the other side. There, that's shoved in. There we go. Sometimes it can be a little bit more work on some of these pins. This one should be easy. It looks like it's behind. Yeah, that was a good one. Just make sure they're set in as far as they can. I know I've got some on the other side that um, I also have to set because that's just how it went in. Uh, you can see here we got almost all the pins set already on this side of the wheel anyway no try it again these pins are just plastic and sometimes they need a little molding a little extra help Pushing the wheel up a little bit just so I can get good access to that pin. There we go. See, they will go in. Sometimes they just need a little bit more TLC. I wasn't over the pin there. Come on. There we go. Three more on this side. Woohoo! This one needs shoved in some more. Come on, that's not gonna go. Come on. Get in there, you. Okay, and again. Come on, you can do it. Nope. You can't do it. And I'm just grabbing whichever tool I find first to push them in. I'm not picking one over the other for any reason. So I'm going to push and hold for a little bit. And come on. Come on. What happens if I put this in the front? Well, the camera had reset because it got too hot using 4K videoing. Anyway, so I'm flipping. I just finished this side. They're all set. I'm going to flip over and we have a few more on this side. By the way, this P-Tool also has this little foot here, which I knew about but never used. And it's really nice for getting in there and shoving those pins in a little deeper. Let's see, you see how that worked? Okay, yeah, let's see, we got five pins left. This one is not quite right. Let's try this one, we'll come back to it. Oh. 
know, those are both too far out. Try it again. Come on. You couldn't do it. Nope, you didn't do it. Boy, sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes you gotta just keep working the pins so they soften up enough that they can get in there. Come on. No. Turn my friend the screwdriver again. So just give it a little turn that way. Yeah, the tennis tire is why people pay me to do it for them because it can be difficult. But it is a 5,000 mile tire. That's what it's rated for. Come on. There it goes. Sometimes you just gotta squeeze it and give it a little time while it's being squeezed to flex down. So I'm just gonna set that and hold it for a few moments. Then rotate, hold it. So it's just gonna take a few more efforts to get in. This one is a stubborn, stubborn sucker. Come on. Looks like it's starting to go down. Keep working it. Ah, there it goes. See that? It took a bit of an effort. But eventually the pins will soften up and move in. Now you can see these are clearly too far out. Just shove them all in while I got the tool here. This one's gonna be ah, there we go. I didn't think that one was gonna go. I like to do this and move it. I'm learning the technique is just to go slow. Let's come back to this. This one, I think, looks like it shouldn't be a problem. Just jinx it. Oh boy, this is tough because that spoke is in the way. Let's see if I can do this with the spoke in the way. Might have to use the other tool for this. The one that I'm not a big fan of. Because it's so much harder to use. Yeah, the worst part about this is if you do have a spoke that's in the way of the pin. Try it a few more times, just soften up that pin. Rotate it into place and just hold it for a little bit. Last two. I wonder if it's seated on the other side. It feels like it's seated on the other side. Last, sorry, last three. I spoke too soon. I don't think it's gonna go too far out. This one should go in easy. This one is, I hate when that happens. Drop my tool. Ugh. This one looks like it's in pretty well. Let's see if it's if I'm able to set it. Why am I having trouble 
I think it's the spoke again. There we go. Oh, that one is easy. This one, on the other hand, is not so easy. Last two. This one does not want to seat. This is a not happy pin. Come on. There we go. There we go. And here we got the trouble one with the spoke in the way. That I might have to use the other tool on. Let's see. Nope. We got it in. Yeah, okay. Just give it a little rock and roll here. Well, we're just going through these pins and I looked at both sides and we are good. We have our mounted Canis wheel. Next thing I wanna do is just double check it on the truing stand. I might let it heat up again in the sun just so it softens because I see some of these, some of these pins look like they've you know pulled away from the tire a little bit i think a little softening in the sun might solve that problem like here probably when i overstretch it you can see there's a gap there but the pins are in there and that is um good and again we double checked the rotation is this way same as this you see we pull this way to go forward that's going backwards and there we go and as you can see here, it is wobbling. Wobbling can also be caused by a pin that is not well seated into the rim. So if you see a wobble, check for pins not all the way clicked in first. But the rim is true. So I, this is where I made my mistake before. I thought it put the wheel out of true, but it's not the wheel that's out of true, it's the tire. From the truing arm, we can see it, it's, right where it should be it's not hitting the rim they're hovering just right bring that one in a little bit and we can see the rim is true but the tire does wobble can you see this shiny sheen on this tire that's the protective coating and you need to ride this wheel for about 75 miles to wear that off. And then the tire becomes much more pliable. So I am not going to do anything to this tire. I'm not going to true it. I'm not going to do anything for 75 miles. And then I'll consider if I need to true anything up. Because I've learned from experience that this tire has to settle in to the rim. And that is unique about these tires because, you know, if you put a pneumatic tire on here, it's just going to be pretty, pretty good from the get-go for a brand new tire. But these tires are less um, malleable. They need to warm up. They need to soften. They need to break in. And then we'll take a look at the trueness and see if that's gotten better. When I started to true this Tannis airless tire, I took the entire wheel and I put it out in the direct sunlight and I did this side for 30 minutes, then I flipped it and did this side for 30 minutes. Got it very warm, brought it in, and started pulling it to the right and the left to get it much more true. And it did a really good job, but I still have a few parts that are pulling away a little bit. And I've marked them again here with this tape on both sides. And I, what I need to do is I need to pull this this way. But it won't budge right now because it's cold. So I'm going to use my commercial heat gun to warm it up. It may be hard to talk over this, but we'll see what happens. It does get pretty loud. And I'm just going to be warming the tire. Between these marks. It's 
getting warmer. Got to get the heat deep into the rubber. Don't want it so hot that it melts, but hot that it's too hot to touch. And of course, I don't want to heat the rim up, just the, just the tire. It's getting hot. I take about three minutes. Okay, now I gotta put the heat gun in cool mode. I'm gonna take this and just pull. Pull the hole. It is hot. Even the rim is hot. Just kind of roll it like a regular tire. And then I'm gonna come back here and get them rolling it. And it's still warm. Give it a good roll. Working the epicenter. Checking the marks here on the back where I need to pull. Okay, if I rotate it now, let's see. It's still pulling a little bit, so I've got to work it more. Actually, it's much better already much better it's only a little bit of the tire now it's still a bit warm but it is cooling down very quickly and as i pull it i'm holding it and then rolling it through the truing stand a bit more let's go warm it up some more might have to do this a few times the point of rubbing is over on this side now And I'm just going to hold it like that for a few minutes and you can feel it cooling in my hands. And I'm just kind of holding there while it cools. And check. Much, much better. Over here it needs a little now. Actually, let's check, let's check this all out right now. So these are the marks. My hand is right on where the marks are on this wheel. And let's see here. See, it's much quieter. The microphone is not picking up as much sound because I was able to shift the wheel a little bit to one side. And if I open this up just a little bit and give it a nice rotation, you can see it's much, much better than it was. Now again, this wheel has not been broken in yet. It still needs to be ridden, and that will help with making it more true. An important question is, how hot can I make my tire? The answer is, if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot because you have to be able to hold it and manipulate it. And quite frankly, I haven't found getting it more hot than you can reasonably and comfortably touch is just not important. You don't need to get it so hot that it's going to melt. And by the way, in my research, I had first tried this technique on this tire that I had cut off, and I found that even when I heated it very, very, very hot, possibly too hot to touch, it did not melt or deform and was still more malleable. But again, if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot and stop at that point. Now I do have a disclaimer. This is my technique. This is the technique that I use myself and is no way uh, endorsed by Tannis or Tannis America. So use at your own risk and discretion and I hope that was helpful for you. So if you like this video, if it did help you in some way fix your problems please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell and liking this video because that helps the google youtube ag algorithms to show other people who are just like you this video well thanks for watching all of part two where i rebuilt this wheel and if you click here 
There's part three, where I'm mounting a brand new Tannis airless tire. And if you missed it, here's part one, where I removed the Tannis airless tire. Thanks for watching.